everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. I hope everybody had a wonderful 4th of July this past week. This week we're going to be kicking it off with some number sense games. It is now July and I know many of us are just starting summer, but there are plenty of teachers around the country and even all over the world who are starting school at the end of the month. So to get started for, you know, July and August, I wanted to start with number sense games. The game I'm going to share with you today is called Roll and Build. It is an easy game that gets students really understanding what those numbers mean, the quantity of those numbers, and what it looks like. Um, of course, at the beginning of the year, I like to have hands-on materials for students to really visualize and feel those numbers. Let's see how to play. These boards right here I actually created back in 2013 when I was creating a number sense unit for my first graders. Um, many of my first graders still are working on their numbers 0 through 20 and that's something we really focus on at the beginning of school. So I wanted just a quick and easy game that got students understanding what those numbers look like. So for roll and build, all students are going to do is roll and build. So for this board, this is only the numbers 1 through 6. This is for kindergarten students or first grade students who are really working on that number sense and maybe don't have too much familiarity with those numbers. So all you're going to need for this is one dice, and there are two ways to play. You can have students work together to try to fill up the board, or you can have students choose their own color cubes, and they're going back and forth to see who can cover up the most. So what they'll do is first, the student will start, and they will roll the dice. Let me see. So I roll and then I build. So if we're playing together, I can just grab any three cubes, but what I will do is I will have students count them out. So let's say one, two, three. They will go ahead and build their number tower and then they will put it right on the three. I'll insert a couple pictures of what it looks like when students are actually playing, but they'll basically cover it so it makes a tower. Then the next student would roll and see what they get. Another three. So the other student would go ahead and build a three cube tower and they would also play it on the three. Now on this board there happens to be three threes, but for many of the other numbers there's only two. And so once a number is completely taken, if a student rolls it, their turn is skipped. If you're playing roll and build as a cooperative game, like I said, they just keep going until the board is finished. You could even have two teams near each other and see which team wins if you want to add some sort of competition to it. And the other way that my students really like to play is they will each choose a color cube. So that first player that rolled a three, they would go ahead and maybe their cubes were all the purple ones. They would only use purple to fill up their towers and the other student could use yellow. And then once the board is completely filled up, they can see who covered the most cubes. As you can see by the picture, what I like about this game is the different size towers. It really puts an emphasis on six being the biggest number and one being the smallest number and what that actually looks like. Now in first grade, I usually only have a group or maybe two that are working on that board. The rest of them are working on this board, which is numbers 2 through 12. So for this game, they play the exact same way, they just are going to use two dice. Like before, you can play cooperatively or competitively, and students will take turns rolling the two dice, finding the sum, so they're already starting their addition, even if they're just counting up the numbers, and then they will stack those towers. This one is fun because of course there is a 12 on here, there's 10s and 11s and those towers get really tall to compare them to what a 2 tower might look like. Any game where students can build towers is usually a hit, especially at the beginning of the year, so students tend to love this easy one. Like I said before, those number mats are actually in my number sense unit, which is a bunch of hands-on activities for students to practice the numbers 0 through 20, but those mats can easily be made yourself. Um, they don't need to be printed out with pretty colors. You could easily just take a piece of paper and draw those boxes in there. Let me see, I have, on my mats there are about 16 boxes, and depending on which mat you use, that is how you will determine what numbers you need. So I actually have three different mats included in my unit. The first one just has numbers 1 through 6, and you only need one dice. That second one which I showed you has the numbers 2 through 12 and that has two dice. And then I have a third one for your more advanced students if they are working on that and that is numbers 3 through 18 and they will use three dice. If you want to look at that unit I will go ahead and link it below so you can take a peek. And that is how you play roll and build. Like I said it is super simple. Grab some dice, make a little mat and some cubes which is usually what you already have in your classroom and students will start playing. Next week I have a quick card game for you, which is going to help students practice their number sense as well, so be on the lookout for that. As always, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. If you want to get notified by email, you can always click that bell. That way you'll find out when my newest video is up. Thanks for watching. Bye. Got my hair done. Looking good. Oh.
Whew. Let me try that again. Look how bright it is. Holy guacamole. 